Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, in the previous videos, I was talking about uh, mainly uh, the pre coding based beamforming and uh, the beamforming uh, happening at uh, the DFTS UFDM block, uh, right? Uh, mainly, we need to focus on the pre coding based beamforming because uh, that is uh, one major concept which is used uh, widely for beamforming. Um, so, uh, basically, I was mentioning that the pre coding based beamforming is a digital beamforming and we are going to use uh, the pre-coding matrix w and and i was mentioning that the, the column of column vectors of this matrix are, uh, can be used uh, uh, as a beam forming vectors uh, to direct the beam in certain direction right uh, but uh, i really want to talk about uh, how these column vectors of this w matrix let's say w bar w1 bar uh, is actually going to influence the um, RF analog beam which is coming out of the antenna okay um, to understand that uh, we need to know certain concepts related to uh, analog beam forming uh, first we will uh, go through those concepts uh, on a very high level in this video and later on we will try to uh, derive the required equations uh, uh, to strengthen the concept so one more concept is uh, I mean one more uh, aspect is that uh, the output of pre-coding, I was mentioning that the signal X1 and X2 are further processed and uh, sent to the physical antennas, right? Uh, but uh, we need to really understand uh, some of the blocks which are present uh, at this stage. So for that, I'm going to write uh, the equation, I mean uh, the diagram here. So let's say this is a pre-coding block. So for now, I will consider only, uh, let's say um, even though we have two antenna ports, I will consider only one antenna port uh, here for now. Mm, let's say this is X1, X2. Mm. So now X1, uh, this is actually uh, in the discrete uh, domain, right? Uh, X1 of N. So what are the further blocks? How does each antenna port, uh, we will have uh, first uh, RE mapping. Okay, RE map. Then uh, we are going to do OFDM signal generation, right? So here we will be applying, uh, you know, see that the parallel converter and then uh, we will be applying uh, high FFT uh, and then uh, CP addition, okay. After that, uh, still here also we will have uh, X1 of K, across the sub carrier we have the samples and uh, uh, now uh, this will be from first uh, uh, sent to digital to analog converter. So here we will have what is called as I will say X1 of T analog signal for the first time here we will have analog signal. So from here onwards uh, what I will call it as uh, the RF chain. Okay. So in, the, in this RF chain uh, we will be having um, high channel and Q channel separately. So we will have a um, up converter. Okay. Basically local oscillators uh, up conversion logic and then uh, finally you know Mm, even I am considering power amplifier is present over here. So all these things are present in RF chain. Let us consider like that. Okay. Uh, now uh, the output of this, let me call it as uh, S1 of T. And then uh, now this is given to the antenna. Okay. Now the signal S1 of T, uh, when it uh, comes out of the antenna, um, I mean, what kind of uh, of uh, antenna beam pattern is formed so let's say depending upon the design of uh, this antenna uh, for single antenna let's say the beam pattern would look like this sorry now let me write it in a different way so somewhat wider beam let, let me say this this would look like this okay let's say this is an example uh, pattern which i'm considering over here so now uh, we need to mainly see what happens in case of uh, uh, two two antennas or two ports here um, you know port one right so port two what happens when we have both the ports so um, this entire uh, uh, thing will happen over here across both the ports okay then uh, the output of this is will go to antenna one and antenna two let's say for now uh, what i would do um, this pre-coding matrix is just uh, one one so uh, you know uh, we will have let's say both uh, x1 across the uh, we will have let's say x1 across uh, both the ports so finally then what will happen here also we will have uh, s1 of t here also we will have s1 of t right now how does the signal look, look like 
uh, two antenna ports, right? Uh, so I want to write it here, uh, two physical antennas. So uh, S1 of T and here also S1 of T, same signal. So basically this is the beam which is coming out of um, S1 of T and let's say this is the uh, beam which is coming out of uh, X2 of T. Okay, so, so sorry. So let me write it a little bit close so that uh, this is also S1 of T, this is also S1 of T. So let's say this beam would look like this and let's say this beam would look like this. Now the thing is when we have both antennas, uh, um, we are going to get uh, the beam which is a little bit narrow right uh, compared to this uh, single antenna case. So the beam would look like uh, uh, something like this let's say. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit narrow and also it has traveled a little longer distance because now the beam is focused and, and it is a pencil uh, kind of beam. Not exactly pencil beam but it is a, a narrow beam compared to the uh, a single antenna beam. And also we will we will have uh, side lobes, okay? Because we have multiple antennas, we'll have side lobes. Now we need to understand how we are going to get this beam, okay? So now since both the signals are same, uh, and and when uh, uh, the signal goes out of the antenna, uh, you know, over the air, um, over the air, the signal will um, collide each other uh, with in phase. And, and at, at certain places it will be colliding with out of phase. So whenever there is a constructive interference, um, the energy is good and that's where this beam is formed. Even uh, at the side lobe level also, there kind of uh, there is there would be some kind of uh, constructive interference. So a small signal uh, uh, energy can be seen here. But outside this, okay, at all these places, also signal is there. But the thing is that uh, uh, you know. Uh, the uh, this is a destructive interference and uh, the signal level is very very low. Uh, let's say for example, if you try to place a receiver over here, let's say RX, hmm, then uh, this would get the signal, but it would be uh, the signal would be below the noise floor of this uh, uh, receiver, so it will not detect anything. Or you would say, let's say this receiver has some kind of sensitivity, and sensitivity is uh, let's say. Uh, sensitivity is let's say like like let's say minus 30 dBm power okay so what it says is uh, if you give the power anything greater than 30 dBm it will detect if it is less than that then uh, the receiver will not detect so let's say if the signal at this point is uh, less than uh, you know 30, 30 dBm then there is no uh, signal receiver at the receiver okay so this is uh, one main uh, thing which we uh, wanted to understand from another beam for me and the second aspect is that, see let's say for example for this receiver only, I have placed this receiver here and it's not receiving any signal. Then if I want to have the signal over to this receiver, then what do I have to do? I have to do uh, some kind of uh, beam forming, right? So uh, beam forming in the sense, I mean beam steering. So I have to actually steer the beam uh, in this direction, okay? So, into a different direction I need to steer compared to this one. Okay, let's say this is 0 degree, then let's say the steering would be, let's say, uh, 35 degree. So now, if I want to do this beam steering, okay, then uh, what is required? So I was telling here we will have RF chain, RF chain. So then after RF chain, uh, there will be uh, phase shifters, okay. Across every uh, antenna, there would be phase shifters, and and we need to give uh, some relative phase shifts across these uh, phase shifters uh, so that uh, you know the beam would form in a different direction. So there was one beam here, and now uh, with the, the relative phase shift, uh, the beam can be formed in a different direction. Okay, let's say the beam can be formed in a different direction. 
So this uh, we will try to derive in the upcoming video related to how to calculate this phase shift and uh, what is the exact equation and things like that. Uh, this is also very much helpful for our further explanations. But uh, right now try to understand that uh, if we give, if we, 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 we need to have uh, these phase shifters. This is a analog analog phase shifters, okay? And this is the hardware component because already we have the uh, RF uh, uh, chain here. The moment we are entering into RF chain, uh, the signal is in analog. Once we have the signal in analog, then we need to have uh, everything in hardware. Uh, so we need to, we, we will have analog phase shifters, okay? And uh, we need to have certain kind of control to give the required phase shift to this. So that also will come in the next video. But right now you understand that to, to steer the beam to a different direction, we need to give some kind of phase shift to these, uh, uh, to these uh, uh, phase shifters across the antennas. I hope you got to know uh, how the beam uh, uh, would uh, would be formed uh, when we have one log signal S1 of T when both of them are equal and we can't, we also got to know how to steer the beam and uh, the next thing which I want to talk here is uh, the multiple beams okay how can we have multiple beams now the thing is that uh, uh, you know across this antenna okay so I was telling uh, I had X1, S1 of T and then uh, I also had S1 of T if both of them are same, then let's say this is also uh, 0 degree, this is also zero, 0 degree. Both of them are same phase. But now, uh, let's say for this, you know, the beam is formed in this direction. Hmm? Now, the thing is that uh, I will consider uh, the other, I will, I will give S2 of T. Okay. Uh, let's say mine, sorry, plus um, S2 of T e to the power of J5. I will give a different phase to this. Now, sorry. Now this S2 of T uh, would uh, would form the beam in a different direction, okay? Depending upon this phase, the di the, di the, the direction would be decided. Uh, but uh, but uh, try to understand that when you give the signal of this form, then uh, the two beams would be formed uh, at uh, two different directions. Okay, this also we'll try to uh, see. Uh, with uh, uh, proper examples in the upcoming videos okay but you now right now you try to understand that if you, if, you, if you try to give the signal like this across antenna 1 and across antenna 2 if you try to give a different uh, signal like this then we can expect uh, two different beams uh, uh, in two different directions i hope uh, the concepts uh, these concepts are clear to you guys uh, these are very much uh, required uh, uh, for our upcoming uh, um, uh, for our upcoming concepts uh, so we'll talk more about beam steering uh, multiple beams and uh, and even how we can exactly relate okay till now i have not spoken about uh, how uh, this um, pre-coding uh, the output of pre-coding uh, is going to influence the uh, influence the antenna beam pattern rf uh, beam pattern i have not spoken about that but uh, to speak about that in the upcoming video, uh, I have right now uh, spoken about all the things which are required uh, to give the explanation. So, so let me speak about it in the upcoming video. For now, I will stop it. Thank you very much. Please do subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.